What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 197 of Two Amazon Sellers in a Microphone. We are creeping up on that 200 mark, which is hard to believe. <laughs> hard to believe we got there, but it's been a fun journey. So, uh, But today, podcast is brought to you by Solozo, and we're going to be talking about just a ton of topics. Um, we're going to be talking about how to drive Google and Pinterest traffic to your Amazon, help with product launch. Uh, I know we're going to talk about a hot new uh, insert tip. We're going to and we're going to cover all kinds of stuff. You know, Amazon posts. We'll go through a whole. We'll get as much in as we can. Uh, but joining us to discuss all of these things is Sumner Hobart, the co-founder of Amazon Escape Plan. What is up, Sumner? How are you? Hey, doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on, and super, super excited for this. Oh yeah, we're very excited. There's a lot of topics we want to talk about, but first, you're you said before the show you're in Argentina. What what's bringing you to what brought you to Argentina? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I guess long story short, right back in 2018, when my wife and I, um, it's, oh, by the way, it's a kind of husband wife team. Wife and I started selling on Amazon. Um, ultimately, it we were making more on Amazon than we were at our jobs. So we're like, okay, uh, let's put more effort into this. So got to the point where we're making all of basically our income um, online. And then we're like, what are we doing in Cincinnati, Ohio? When we love traveling, we don't have kids. I love Cincinnati. There's absolutely nothing wrong with, 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 with that. But um, we just figured, hey, this is a great opportunity for us to travel. And also to be able to live in, and basically I have this entire, uh, it's a Google sheet where I have all these columns ranking countries based on different metrics, including like, well, there's life expectancy, development index, peace index. So kind of like with arbitrage in a way, we're trying to find these like these beautiful, safe um, countries that are inexpensive for our Euro US dollar to go. And then that allows us to reinvest more capital back into our business because we obviously are relying on, you know, kind of building a lifestyle brand. Like we're actually re relying on that for income. And then um, before this, we were in Brazil and then we we're just kind of like hitting up all of South America. So Brazil, Argentina, and then uh, Peru and a little bit in Ecuador. So just trying to hit things off of our bucket list for the next couple of years before we settle. Um, but yeah, the ups and downs for sure. That's one thing I mentioned before is uh, so far it's been great minus got a couple things stolen. And then here at this Airbnb, the Wi-Fi went out a couple of times on us this past week. So we're praying that everything just kind of works with that, but, uh, but no, it's, it's fun. It's fun overall. So, so this, this Google sheet is just like, these are the top places we want to go visit based off of like, how far the US dollar can go and then you just go to them. Yeah, basically. And of course, there's also like there's the subjective element of like interest. So we'll have a matrix scale of on a scale of one to five. How much interest do we have in this place after just doing, you know, like a basic Google image search, looking at like you, a few vlogs about it? Because then we're like, OK, it's it's beautiful. And say, for example, like Tunisia was super high on this list. I'm like, Tunisia? Like what? I, I don't know. I have some not nothing against Tunisians or anything. I don't know. I'm just, huh, that's interesting. I don't know how I feel, but so maybe later, a little bit later down where some other ones were like, oh, Mexico for sure, you know, Argentina for sure. Um, super excited about Armenia, Taiwan, and Georgia. There's like three that are like on the top of my list right now. But yeah, so it's it's kind of, there's a few elements, but yeah, relatively inexpensive with data that suggests relative safety, um, de well developed that there is Wi-Fi, there are Airbnb options and things like that. So yeah, that's kind of the, that's the way that we decide. It's kind of, we try to let data somewhat guide us in that you might be able to make this like some type of service where you can just say. charge like, hey, here's like, where you should uh, go next <laughs> sounds like helium 10 for traveling <laughs> it's how, long, how long are you staying in these areas <laughs> yeah we usually try to spend we spend more time so like argentina and it, it, of course it depends on like the size of the country and then the number of places we want to go within but usually it's between one month to three months and then we do that because as a random side note, totally on the side of, of Amazon, we're starting one of our big passions is videography. So we do a lot of travel videography and things like that on the side. And, and we do some vlogging and things like that. Obviously it's, we're making like nothing on that. Like everything is like Amazon. Um, it's just, it's funny. But uh, so when we stay in a country for a while, we're able to create content on those specific kind of places we go. And then if we're able to go to enough places in a country, we can do like top fives, you know, top five cities, top five places to visit. We can do like a drone recap of, all that. So it's kind of like compounded in terms of content as well. So it makes things a lot easier logistics wise and like currency conversions and stuff. But so we just spend more time instead of just jumping around like, you know, every couple of weeks. 
Yeah, I have a feeling yeah. something big is going to happen out of this. I think something Amazon's going to be the past for you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. This is amazing. We could talk. This could be the whole podcast on this. This is fascinating. I know, like the travel. I, I mean, I'm, I'm traveling, but I'm staying within the states. And we're not going anywhere. Like, yeah, that. where are you guys located? By the way, I, I I meant to ask at the beginning, but Kansas yeah, City. We're, yeah, we're both in Kansas City. Oh, Missouri. okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so yeah. I've, yeah, Midwest. Cincinnati's not mm-hmm. too far, so yeah. Yeah, 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 similar type town. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. That, that's amazing. Yeah, I love this. I, I used to travel a ton, obviously, before I had kids. Now that I have kids, it kind of limits it a little bit. But they're getting older. That's something my wife and I talk about all the time. Is you know we can work from anywhere. So be, going to different places like that—that's fascinating. Oh man. Well, oh, yes. let's- that's what we talk about too, is going through, I mean, cause we've been to a few parts of the U S but of course the U S is, oh my goodness, just gorgeous. I mean, so many mm-hmm. state and national parks that are just incredible, great cities, of course, as well. Um, so yeah, even like, yeah, we, my wife, especially was like, oh yeah. Cause she's, she's actually from Brazil. So she especially loves the U S cause it's like so different, especially with the nature and everything. So it's like, oh, let's just get a, a, an RV and just go through like, you know, from park to park, like go from like, you know, Seattle down to like San Diego or things like that. So anyway, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's one side. That's the whole, but yeah, definitely on this podcast, I want to provide some value uh, Amazon wise uh, as much as I can. And I'm definitely, you know, I, I think we're definitely going to, going to do that. Absolutely. Well, we can dive into the Amazon topics now. Um, you, before we went live, you were mentioning um, talking about some new strategies you're doing with inserts, product inserts, love to hear what you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely. So this is actually, this is something I just made a YouTube video about this. This is kind of a, a newer topic. You know, I have a Facebook group and kind of a channel and I'm always asking like, Hey, what do you, what kind of stuff do you guys want to see? And this is a topic that came up. So I assume this would be kind of valuable. Um, and this is my personal strategy. This is brand new. We're rolling this out with all of our next product orders. And basically what we were doing before 20. So in 2021 is we would have, um, basically like subscribe to get X, Y, and Z. And then X, Y, and Z was like, um, was it, it, it depended on the product, but it's like extended warranty. There could be some kind of free download, um, coupon code, something like that. Just a bunch of different free type of stuff, like a, a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. And basically, so subscribe to get these. And then here's like a, you know, a, a, a subdomain that goes to our, a page on our website. It's not a sales page, but it's a page on our website. So it's a landing page where people just enter their name and email and then they get the stuff um, and then that helped build our email list. But <laughs> more recently, 2022, um, and it was working well, uh, we still are still working on our, our email marketing strategy, which is still a little bit, but um, yeah, Amazon is beyond, at least from what we have seen from a lot of sellers and, and heard, thankfully nothing with us or anything, but uh, really cracking down on inserts and seeing especially an increase of customers and competitors of yours on Amazon, um, taking screenshots of both the insert and different parts of the process. If there's like an email marketing component involved or anything like that, and then sending that into Amazon, um, and getting some accounts shut down or suspended. Um, so with that, that kind of made us nervous. And then we always are looking, you know, at Amazon seller code of conduct for any kind of changes. Like every month we, we go through to make sure that we're on top and you know, that we're in line. And one of the big things that it's kind of a gray area is, um, that you're not allowed to do with inserts is divert sales traffic. You're not allowed to circumvent the Amazon sales process. So it's kind of a gray area of like, oh, we're collecting email. You know, it's, it's an email list. We're not, you know, sending them to our to our website to, to buy, but got me super nervous seeing kind of an increase of people getting in trouble with their inserts. I'm like, okay, we need to get like within Amazon's kind of terms of service. But like, what the heck do we do? Like, how do we stay within terms of service and still use inserts as a way to ultimately at least maybe generate more reviews like ethically and and all that it's like man so what do we do so i was doing a lot of research and just brainstorming a lot of different ideas and we're you know we're in a lot of different kind of places like we sell on etsy and we do a few different things kind of on the side and we came up with two strategies and these are the two strategies that we're now including especially after reading seller code of conduct and any updates and all of that and what we're doing is and basically these two strategies, you can either go with one or the other, or what we're doing is both to try to just maximize like each insert. And to keep it simple, what we're doing is on one side of our product insert, 
and by, I think everyone knows product insert, like a thank you card, little piece of paper that goes in products. So mm -hmm. meant to say that, okay, now we know. <laughs> little piece of paper, um, just like money, it's worthless on its own, but then you make a very, very special type of printing and it comes from a special place and it has value. So yes. with this piece of paper on one side, we have uh, basically, it can either look like a, con we're, we're actually kind of A-B testing between products, like half the inserts are one or the other, but it can either be like a contest where, hey, post a photo of you using the product or it could be on a story on Instagram. Because about 50% of, I think, um, of Amazon shoppers have Instagram. So it's like about 50% of customers or more, I think 50 to 60. So, um, you know, post for a chance to win a $50, $100 Amazon gift card giveaway that we have every month. Or you could even pay, and this was a tip actually from a, a friend of mine, Stephen Pope, brilliant guy, and was talking about, and I liked his, where he was actually paying for Instagram posts. Like you pay, depending on your, your product's margin, like $5, $10, even $20 to post. And it depends on what you can do. So it's like, what's the benefit of that? Like, obviously, you know, people just word of mouth. So number one, um, what's really interesting is that getting word of mouth from small, so you talk about like micro-influencers. Your customers are in a way like nano influencers, right? Like really, really small influencers. So they're, even if these people who are posting, so number one, you got to get that virality element. These people who are posting your product on Instagram, they might have a small audience, but that small audience is super well connected with them. Hopefully they're like really close friends, really close family. Um, and they'll have kind of a very high um, authority even compared to other influencers. So there's kind of that element. Number two is that with their permission, you can repost that content onto your own Instagram and kind of that's a way to just to build your Instagram if you're not creating any other content. Um, and, and as well as other social channels, like you do Facebook and things like that. You can also, again, with their permission, use that in your images, in your A plus content, and you could use that for Amazon posts. So depending on kind of how creative you can get with that content, and again, you just, you need to ask for permission. And there's like free documents you can look online of like, um, you know, uh, was it permission release for like, uh, for, for photos, things like that. But yeah, so they post that alone. There's a little bit of virality. There's a little bit of, okay, reach out to friends and family. Like, Hey, everyone look at this awesome product that I bought and you can get kind of direct sales from that potentially. Number two is that you can repurpose that content and that can go into a lot of different areas and be really, really powerful. Even if you just do it's like, all right, for this next product insert, we're going to pay, you know, $10 to each person who posts. And we're just going to do it for this, you know, set just to get a bunch of content in. And then we're going to, you know, change the product insert later. So you don't have to go ongoing. It could just be strategically for, you know, a certain number of units on the next order. If that's, um, you know, uh, uh, a, a marketing initiative that you have. So that's kind of the idea there. And then also, again, read terms of service for yourself and see. But from that, now you're going to get more followers on Instagram. And now you have people who, you know, Hey, they posted, they bought my product. You can potentially reach out and say, Hey, we, you know, love that you posted. Thanks so much. We'd appreciate your honest feedback. You're not going through. So again, read Amazon search of service for yourself and, and see, you know, how you feel for me, completely off of Amazon, completely unrelated to Amazon on Instagram, my own followers and not asking for a positive review at all, not incentivizing any kind of reviews, just asking for an honest review. And as you're growing your Instagram, depending on how large it gets, what you can do is post a story and say, Hey, is anyone a proud owner of, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, products like, you know, you proud product owner. Yes or no. And then everyone who says yes, um, you see who responds to yes. You can have your VA or yourself or whoever reach out and kind of ask, Hey, we saw that you're a proud owner. We're so happy. Hey, would you mind leaving your honest feedback um, on Amazon? If you haven't, you know, already. And if obviously Amazon's your main sales channel, then the majority of your, you know, uh, of people with these products came from Amazon. So, so that's the Instagram side, kind of the reasoning and how to do it. And um, now the only gray area there is Amazon says, don't divert sales traffic to an external website. So it's kind of, but um, it could be a gray area in that regard. But I, based on my own interpretation, is fully within Amazon's terms of service. But if that's a little bit too complicated or it doesn't really sound that great, there's another strategy. And again, we're using both literally like one side and then on the bottom it says flip me. And you flip it around and then there's this strategy on the other side. So we, um, last year when there was this really big kind of bottleneck with logistics and all of these issues, um, like, like when it was really bad, um, we, my wife, we kind of have all of our tasks kind of delegated and my wife does all the kind of logistics and she's telling me, oh man, Summer, this is like, this sucks. Like 
like our, you know, we have to like increase prices because like, it's just, you know, our margins are getting cut and like lead times are crazy. Like, oh man. And then I don't know, we were at the time we were in Croatia and I was like swimming. And then I was like, just had this thought of like digital products. Like, why don't we start selling digital products like on Etsy? Because we already had an Etsy shop for our brand. So it's the exact same products that we're selling on Amazon. We just create listings on Etsy. And um, I think we have the 3PL that does all that. She knows, she, she deals with all that. We already had an Etsy shop. And we're like, why don't we also, why don't we just try this, start selling some digital products on Etsy. So what we did is we literally just went on Etsy and typed in um, like digital or digital download, printable, SVG, like different keywords for like digital products on Etsy. And by the way, um, a lot of people don't know this, Etsy is a huge platform for digital products. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting platform. So obviously there's like the customized products. There's the very beautiful, um, you know, it's a, it's a great, obvious, it's, Etsy is also great for like product research. When you know, like, hey, I want to sell wine stoppers on Amazon. You go to Etsy, what's the number one selling wine stopper on Etsy? Oh, it's a crystal wine stopper. Hmm. You go to Amazon, it's like, oh, there's no crystal wine stoppers like this. This one's like made of, you know, uh, of, what is it, amethyst. There's no amethyst wine stopper. Ah, maybe I'll, you know, kind of do some arbitrage there. So really powerful tool. And it's a great place for digital products. So we started launching some. And one thought that we had is like, wait, this is really cool. So if we launch a digital product on Etsy, we can take that same digital product and add it on the back end of our products. So basically, you know, on our insert, we can have, you know, free, whatever it is, like free, um, you know, personal financial planner. You know, it's like a Google sheet template that I've actually built. I actually have this. And you, it kind of is a, is a digital complement to your physical product. And some products, it's a little bit more obvious. Some you have to be a little bit more creative, but create this digital product. You can sell it on its own on Etsy, which is really cool. And we're doing like right now, it's like, I think we're do, doing about a thousand a month on this product in profit for this digital product on its own on Etsy, which is really cool. Not much, but you know, it's, it's still good. Um, and then we use it on the back end and say, hey, get this product for free. And there's a QR code you can scan or a subdomain that redirects that goes, it could either go to like a Google Drive folder and it could just download their Dropbox or it could go, if it's like a Google Sheet, it could go directly to the Google Sheet. So it's this actually valuable product. It's not like a, a crappy ebook that other people like include that doesn't actually have any value. It's at, people are actually buying this for like $10, $20 on Etsy. And you're giving it to them for free um, and you're doing it on the back end to where, so number one, obviously you're going to surprise and delight your customers. You're going to give them more value than they expected. And that's like, and again, like we're, re we're rolling this out now with all the next kind of, uh, of, of um, product orders, which we're really excited about. And we'll be updating with like our results of like, Hey, here's like what our review rate was before and after and everything, but we're very, um, very excited for it. Uh, so yeah, you increase the value without increasing your product costs, which is really cool. Um, and you could use that same digital product for, um, to actually generate some additional profit and kind of help your overall margins um, with kind of logistics because there's no inventory required. So it's just kind of a random, like, I know, again, both these are a little bit of effort are required, a little bit of, you know, work that are needed. And in terms of like the digital download, because I think it's a lot easier than a lot of people think. A lot of people kind of hear it, they're like, oh yeah, kind of sounds cool. It's too complicated. Or oh, I don't know if it's really worth it. I would definitely have digital assets that can be used again in multiple ways. You use it for your product inserts. You can use it as a lead magnet um, to, to collect emails. You can use it to obviously stand alone and generate more profit. And um, what you can do really simply is kind of like, okay, what is your product category overall? Let's say it's like a, you sell a, a physical kind of like financial planner. Like you write down all of your expenses and your, your income and your retirement, all of that. Um, you kind of put those words like financial and then type in the words like digital, printable, download, things like that into Etsy and just get some ideas and see products that are actually selling. Look through it, you know, buy the product, look at it and be like, huh, this is kind of cool, but there's always ways to improve. Then go to a place like freelancer.com, hire, you know, a cheap freelancer from like Algeria, which is what I do. He's amazing. And pay him like 20 bucks an hour and say, hey, here's an existing product. And obviously you're not copying it at all, of course, but you're taking it. You're like, here's what it kind of looks like. But here's what I want to change in terms of like the font, the colors. Here's like some maybe additional tabs that I want or some additional content and basically have them kind of create this. And you, you literally don't have to do this yourself if you don't have kind of the, the design skills. And it can be very inexpensive, fairly quick. And now you have this powerful asset that can be used in all those ways. So that's the two things. 
digital product on one side, like, hey, thanks for being a customer. Here's here's a you know something that's usually worth 15 bucks. We're giving it to you for free. Um, and it's, it actually is valuable and helpful. And then on the other side, you know, and then also, by the way, I know you're super happy. You're going to leave this review already. You're, you're really happy. Go post with us on Instagram. You have a chance to win, you know, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. Um, so that's the overall strategy. Uh, I think it, it clicks with a lot of people. Like it's very kind of, it's, it's very common sense. It's not this like back end funnel and, and, you know, data and everything. It's very like just focused on how to provide more value than your customer expects. Um, without breaking Amazon's terms of service, so that's that's the idea there. On the on the first side, on the Instagram side, are they tagging you, hashtagging it? What's the how do you, how do you yeah, know it? So how do you get I, notified? I was because I was talking to some other sellers who just started doing this as well, and that's why we kind of I didn't I partially came up with it, but partially from others. We're always like you know bouncing ideas back. We're doing hashtag. I I I would I would say tag the brand. Cause like, I don't really have, I, there's not much value in my view of really building out your brand's hashtag versus actually getting tagged um, in that. Um, and you could also tell people to do both, tag us and use the hashtag. Now, again, that when you tell people to do more than one thing, it gets a little bit more complicated and they might just do one or the other. Um, but I don't see much benefit of having like, oh, hey, here's all the posts for my brand's hashtag. It's like, who's using this hashtag? I'd rather than put um, like a, a longer, you know, like long tail keywords, yeah. long tail hashtag i'd rather than put like a not that they would this would get way too complicated but i'd rather than put long tail hashtags that all of a sudden like on all these different long tail hashtags my product is showing up like on these searches versus my key my, my my brand search that no one except for myself is looking up or maybe some people would because they're interested but they'll just go to my my instagram feed they wouldn't look up my hashtag so that's just my view is tag and then you can have a little text at the bottom that says um once you've posted just message us and then we'll either, you know, we'll pay directly like through PayPal or just tag us and you're automatically enrolled and every month we'll randomly select. But of course, be sure to follow our Instagram because that's where we're going to uh, announce the winner. So be sure to follow, follow, follow. And on the QR code, what's the action they have to take? What are they, what are you getting in, re in return from them? Or are you just giving them the, the, the digital download for free if they just scan it? For free. So there's no, there's no email marketing with it. It's purely like, because yeah. It's purely giving it to them. So the way there's no, um, there's no issue. Like there's in no a way, ask. exactly. Yeah. Because they've already customer it kind of, in my view, it's a little bit weird, not too weird, but for them to obviously be beneficial to me, but go to a landing page and re-enter their information. Like I just bought from you. It's like, well, right. I don't have your information. Amazon mm -hmm. has your information. I don't have your data. <laughs> I want your data, but, uh, but yeah. So it's kind of weird in that regard. And then also with the kind of the gray area of diverting sales traffic, I think that's a very obvious. And then, then it's also a very obvious if my competitor is looking at this and maybe in my email marketing flow before, not saying I did, that maybe I had like, I follow up 14 to 23 days later automatically and said, Hey, we'd really appreciate your honest feedback. And then the competitor, you know, screenshots that sends it into Amazon. Um, so that's why, yeah, just direct value. It's super easy for them. Like they immediately get it. They're like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, are you serious? Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the reason, uh, the reason for going direct to the. Are you doing anything in the digital download to like, Hey, use this code next time to get 50% off the next product or anything on the digital inside the digital download? Uh, yes and no. So, uh, so this is another kind of thing. It depends on kind of how your digital download behaves. Like I said, I think almost everyone should be doing this. Like, honestly, I think it's just an amazing thing. Uh, yeah. it's, it's an amazing asset to have that you can use, but of course you need to be able to use it. Otherwise you're just sitting and doing nothing. So depending on it. So, okay, this is really cool. So I have this Google sheet. It's one, it's one of the digital products uh, that I've created and it basically tracks all of uh, someone's like their income expenses, retirement, everything, their, their life goals, how close they are. It shows them important metrics. Like, Hey, um, here's the percent that's going toward expenses and here's what it should be based on your parameters, all that, like all automatic, super little effort for them to do. So it's actually valuable. And I have a tab where it's like, Hey, by the way, here's some bonus resources. Like here's some, like, if you really want to get your, um, your financial life in check and really like, like crush it, like get out of debt, here are some really great, um, some of the top, you know, audiobooks. So there's like, uh, you know, Dave Ramsey and, and, um, some investing books or whatever. So I have Amazon affiliate links to those books. So what's cool that. is you can have, yeah. So you can, so in your digital download, you can be creative, you can cross sell. So like, if you're making a book about, Hey, here's some other financial products you might be. So if you have a line of financial products, you can have links. They obviously they're your own links. So just your own link. 
in the template, depending on how it looks like, that, that cross-sell or upsell your other products on Amazon or even off Amazon with others. So there's some creative ways to do that. And that's what's really cool too, by just being strategic in that regard, giving this download to people for free, it actually, a certain person, it'll, it'll convert at a certain percentage. So even if it's like, you know, a very small percentage of people actually click and purchase, um, you get out to enough people, it's going to convert. Um, and you're, you're actually, even though it's for free, number one, you're crushing it in terms of value and people are going to return, you know, you're putting that value out into the ether and you're probably going to see that back in some, in some way. And then, yeah. And then by getting it into more hands, you know, a percent of people are going to click and then buy those affiliate links or your other products. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's a, and it's just one strategy. There's multiple ways to do it. Um, that's just kind of my thought process and my strategy. And we're in the, some testing that we've done so far, it's been working really well. And like I said, we're going to like really scale it out and I'll make like an update video or something or say, Hey, here's how it's going, but really excited for it. Well, that's what's cool about the space. Like you do one thing you're like, oh, I could take it to the next level. I could do this one thing and then I could do this one thing. And then just keep it like, there's always things you can keep improving on. Oh my the, goodness. It's yeah. Yeah. For 100%. Just, the affiliate marketing was the first thing that came to my mind when you yeah, when he said links. I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Um, I mean, what a way that could, you could recoup all your advertising money for the sale off of uh, affiliate marketing product that people buy. And there's so many things that, Whew, that was worth it right there. Okay, enough tips for today. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, that's amazing, though. Um, real, that's I love outside the box thinking. I like the whole premise of what you said is value add. It's just like better value for the customer, better value for the customer. You're not really asking them to do anything. You're just giving them more value. And people are looking for other things that can help facilitate whatever they're trying to do. If it's financial planning or any of that. So it's, it's a great resource. How nice is that to say, Oh, here's other assets that you could utilize to, to achieve your goal. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the biggest, I mean, I, everyone it, it's, it's been a conversation forever for years, but how do I get more reviews? How do I get more five-star reviews during launch after launch? I just, I want more reviews always. Of course we do. And and it's, it's, it's one of those things I find it's, it's like this, this, it goes to my life philosophy because like I see this kind of this truth that exists in multiple arenas, whether it's like selling products on Amazon or products or services anywhere else in relationships in like, you know, uh, uh, financial fitness, like all of these different areas. And that is like usually, uh, you know, to really get results, you really have to put an effort. Like it's very rare that you put in a little bit of time or a little bit of money and just get a ridiculous back. Obviously there's always, I mean, with business models and things like that, you want to look for the lowest resources in and the biggest return back in the immediate and the long term, but in terms of reviews, everyone's like, what's the quick fix? Like what, like what button do I press in my orders tab to request a review? And I'm just going to get a bunch or, Oh no, what happened to the early reviewer program? It's like, this is actually amazing because all of your competitors are going through the same things that you are. And really it's like, it's, 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 it's like, Hey, summer, how do we get more reviews? Oh, Hey guys, I have the answer. Oh my gosh. What is it? I'm going to write it down. Add more value than they expect. Oh, really? That's your, that's your, <laughs> that's sexy, that's right? Hard. Yeah. <laughs> What button do I press? Like what, like Healing 10, don't they have something? Or Solozo, don't they have? It's like, no, like that's that's really, and we we realize this, we're like, all right, how do we freaking, like, how do we do this? Like, how do we over deliver in value and like really do it? Um, no, we're super, like this year is, last year, obviously with all the craziness that happened and even this year, a lot of the craziness, um, but this year we are with our Amazon brands, like we are going hard on a lot of different kind of uh, elements and we are really pushing things. And this is one of the, one of the sides of like our inserts right now, like let's, let's really dial into this um, as well as some, some other, some other aspects. But yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's so funny. Like, like when's the last time, like, you know, I asked people, when's the last time you left a review? I know the last time I left, well, not the last time I try to leave a lot of reviews. Cause I hope like if I leave a lot of reviews that are good, people leave it for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so I, I do that all the time. I, and it, they're almost always good unless I have a horrendous experience. The person was like a jerk and never made things right. And like try to scam me or whatever. It's the only time. Otherwise, it's like almost always five stars. But we were in. It was so funny because it was like a perfect analogy. And I mentioned this in the video. But we were in um, in Turkey. And Turkey is an amazing country. It was really, really cool. Super nice, hospitable people. And we go to this. We're like, oh, it's super late. Like we go to this one restaurant. It's like the last restaurant that's open. And we order like a bunch of food because we didn't eat all day. And we don't even know what we're ordering. And the, it was this old husband and wife, like cook, super nice. And 
what well, like we ordered and they kind of helped us and we couldn't speak any Turkish. They can speak any English. So like, we're just like pointing at things. We're like, okay, like there's no photos. We're like, I don't know what this is, but sure. This, 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 this. <laughs> and she like, we order, we don't even know what we order. Sit down. She's getting us some, uh, some Turkish tea, uh, gives us some, what else? Oh yeah. She gives us some tea while we're sitting, asks if we want anything else. Oh no, 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 we're fine. Making the food, gives us all the food, takes like, I think 10% off the order, I guess, cause it was a pretty big order. And then also throws in this like local, I don't know what it is. It's called black honey, which is delicious, like super dark honey. that's local and some extra fruit just boom. And I'm like, Oh, so she did all. So there's a reason I'm telling the story. She does all this, like free tea, the free fruit, the, the, the honey. Wow. This is amazing. And super nice. I'm like, Oh my goodness. So I eat this meal. And as soon as I eat the meal, like the, my first thought is like, I'm leaving her the best review. So I go and find them on Google and they are on Google. I'm like, oh my gosh, they have a Google business profile. That's crazy. Awesome. So I'm going to go uh, to leave them a review and I do, and they have, and it doesn't surprise me. They have, I think now it's over 2000 reviews, 4.9 stars. Wow. So, you know, that's just an example of, um, you know, it's not Amazon specific or Amazon related, but a business that is, you know, on the back end providing more value than you expect. And it, it, there's a clear example I'll see if I can link it or something. You can all, you know, go and leave reviews from afar. And be like, oh, they're awesome. I heard about you guys on a podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I love that. A, I love that a, type a of stuff. Real example, even a brick and mortar restaurant. Yeah. yeah, I love that type of stuff. Like even just going out and, and around your surroundings and like just being a customer and, and getting that experience. And then you're always like, okay, hey, what could they have done better? Or what did they do really, really good? Or man, that guy was went above and beyond the service. Like it's, it's just a, uh, it's good to be like on the other side sometimes to see what other people are doing. And you can put those in your business. Like, like they're doing with that <laughs> review. That's review counts. That's crazy. You mentioned, I'm going to pivot just real quick. You mentioned, cause I want to talk about this uh, Google ad and Pinterest. Cause that's a, that's a hot topic. You mentioned a uh, product launch uh, previously about like launching, trying to get reviews. TOS was changed and term, Amazon terms of service was changed and people were doing search fine buys and ranking c- campaigns. And now it's, you know, kind of like gray hats and black hat stuff. And, and there's gotta be new avenues. Pinterest and Google are two areas of traffic that you could potentially drive people to your Amazon listing. I, I don't know how it works. I want to hear more about it. So that's why we brought you on. So tell me what you're doing with Pinterest and Google. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, hundred percent. Um, super, this is actually usually what like people know me for like talking about, like I talk about this all the time. That's why I want to kind of break it up, but it's super relevant and, and very important. Okay. So when it comes to, I always think about this is of course, I'm always trying to look for the minimal amount of resources. So like t- usually time and money in and the most return back. And I'm willing to put in the effort. Don't you get me wrong. I'm putting the capital that's needed, but always trying to be efficient. So the same is true when it comes to product launch. So number one is definitely, um, obviously everyone knows about Amazon PPC, ton of content, people obviously are searching for that. So definitely dial in on your Amazon PPC. That's definitely going to help you with launch. That's low hanging fruit. Your customers are on Amazon. They're red hot. Like they're not a cold audience. They're ready there to buy. So make sure you're utilizing all different match types, ASIN targeting, category targeting. If you're brand registered, use all that. So do that. So that's on Amazon. Now off of Amazon, is there anything that can be done? Absolutely. So the same idea here with Amazon PPC, right? It's amazing that you're able to target people who are on Amazon searching for products like your product right at that time and target them. So it made me think, are there any other places to some degree that I could target people who are in buying mode? Like, because, you know, people have done a lot with like Facebook ads or Instagram ads. Uh, Usually that was done a lot with like rebates or fine buy, which obviously, as you mentioned, is completely a no-no now. Like maybe some sellers are doing it. I don't know but maybe they're doing just a few a day to try to not uh, alert the algorithm. I don't know, but it's not allowed. And so what I did is, uh, and this is funny because before I got into Amazon, I did like uh, marketing for local businesses, mostly around my college in Cincinnati for the university of Cincinnati. So like different businesses. And one of the kind of services I offered was Google ads. And with Google ads, very similar to Amazon PPC. And so it's about a third of product purchases in the United States that are online begin on Google. Okay. So like a huge percent, so there's a very large percentage of people who are on Google looking for products where obviously Amazon's the lion's share. There's still a lot on it on, on Google, which a lot of people don't know, but it's, it's big, it's diverse. So what you can do is create what's called a Google search ad. 
So this is, if you, if you go on Google right now, just type in like, type in locksmith, like Kansas City locksmith, and you'll likely see an ad and it'll say, it looks just like a search result. You know, it's blue. There's like the headline. There's like the little um, kind of metadata there, but it has the word like sponsor, the word ad, just like a kind of a sponsored product ad. And Amazon actually based a lot of their advertising platform off of Google ads. So you learn Google, ad, or sorry, you learn Amazon PPC, which I think pretty much every Amazon seller is doing. They're executing on to some degree. Great. There's a lot of overlap in terms of how they set up campaigns and kind of in terms of how it works. And what you can do is with Google, and, and this is how you would use it. So with Amazon, you might target, you know, you're going to target maybe broad match and phrase match and all these different match types. With Google, you want to only target exact match for extremely relevant keywords. So only, so like not like, um, you know, free X, Y, Z, like a free wine topper or wine topper blog or wine. Those are very, um, those are people, those people are not looking for products to buy. They're looking for content. So you only want to drill down to the people who are on Google to buy because there are people who are on Google to buy. And how you do that is by creating a Google search ad campaign where you target um, super, super relevant um, keywords. And basically you use common sense. Right? If someone types this into Google and they see like, you know, my, and basically they were able to see my product, is there a good chance they would buy that? You know, cause so. Like, like wine topper Amazon. Work. What's that? Like wine topper Amazon would be like a search. Search oh, first. yes. Yes. So exactly. It would be good. So I like to have like, well, I have a few ad groups, but to take it a step further. So target. So what you can do is if you've already been running Amazon PPC, go to your exact match campaign, set the date range to lifetime and then organize in descending order by orders. So you see your, your, your top sales driving keywords, at least from your PPC. And then that's a really great list. All right. You know, people are searching this on Amazon and buying your product. There's a very good correlation um, that people would also purchase. But again, some of those are going to be a little bit more broad. They might be category specific, like uh, like kitchen accessories. It's like, that's a bit too broad. Someone going on Google looking for kitchen accessories, they're not looking for your product. They don't, they don't even know if they're buying. They're just kind of like in the that initial phase. You want to get them kind of at the end. So it's like whatever it is, silicone, spatula, whatever, you know, that kind of specific um, keyword. So, so yeah, that's kind of in terms of keyword research is every single keyword that you can come up with, whether it's from a tool or it's from your own data, you can target that in exact match, take those. So that's in one ad group, create another ad group and then add the word Amazon to that. So it's blank, you know, blank keyword or your product and then followed by Amazon. And obviously that will likely convert even better because they're, and you just think, oh, well, people just go to Amazon. There are so many people, so many people that go on Google and type in your product and then followed by Amazon. They'll see your ad, click on it. And, and then in terms of, okay, Google search ad, that's the keywords that we're targeting. In terms of how it looks like, it's like a, it's a, it's, it's just text, really simple. And it's a headline that can highlight um, what you want to do. Make sure with your Google ad, if you do set this up, which you, I, I would say you should consider kind of testing is in the very beginning of your headline, make sure that you have your um, main keywords it, because a, when you're at, so when a, I'm trying to keep this simple, but when a search result matches the search query, the click through rate is crazy high. And there's a little hack that you can do to actually, it's called a modifier to where you can actually like have Google modify the keyword. So like whatever someone types in, your ad will actually update with that exact text in your headline. Um, so, so there's slight, so it might be slight, so it might be like, I'm just, I don't know why I'm, I'm touching on this. I just found this product that was kind of cool, but crystal wine stopper or like gemstone wine stopper or wine topper or whatever. So when ty someone types in crystal wine stopper, your ad, that first part of your headline shows up crystal wine stopper. But someone does gemstone wine stopper, it updates as gemstone wine stopper. So that increases your click through rate. As, but you want to make sure, of course, that you're super targeted, that all of those different keywords are obviously relevant. It's like a cork wine stopper, and then it updates cork wine stopper, but you're not selling cork. It's that's not going to work. So, so anyway, you want to make sure that your main keywords in the main part of the headline, it's really going to inc increase click throughs and then ultimately conversions later on. And the other parts, you want to kind of just focus on what are the top, you know, features and benefits. So maybe, you know, it's super fast shipping, you have a money back policy, um, you know, put in the price there. It's always good to put in the price in any kind of external ad, especially because you want the right people to click on your ad. If someone sees your price, it's like, oh, uh, 40 bucks, it's $40. Ooh, that, you know, they're looking in Google search and that's already too high for them. They're just like, oh no, $40, no, no. scroll down, click on something else. Um, you don't want them. Cause if your product's $40 and, and they aren't gonna click on a ad that says $40, they're probably not going to buy. So you don't want them. You don't want to pay for that click. 
for them to, to click on. So price point, main keyword, and then main features and benefits. That's kind of what goes into the headline and the rest of the text. And then you're targeting those keywords and the, and then in terms of, okay, so someone clicks on it, where do they go? Well, with this, and there's different ways you can do this. You can have a landing page with a coupon or whatever. But what I like to do is send that traffic directly to my Amazon product detail page because Amazon has very clearly expressed for many months now that they want external traffic. They've been, I, I feel very, very clear about that. And, they're, and with a brand referral program brought up by Amazon, they're even willing to pay you for driving sales from other channels to Amazon. They really want to capture. So we have found, and there's, there's a lot of evidence to this. There's no way to know in my view, like a hundred percent, because I'm not actually, I'm not actually going into the code, like in the algorithm, like I don't see it, but I, I can see like, you know, we're throwing a bunch of the stuff at our listing and then we're tracking like our unit session percentage rate. We're looking at our keyword rankings. We're looking at total sales, like all of that. And definitely external traffic, even direct to your listing. Now people used to use two-step URLs or like super URLs or these different types of, basically it's ranking manipulation. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore because Amazon's clearly said no. Um, so if you don't even know what two-step URLs are, it doesn't matter. Like just ignore it. Um, but there's, I found there's still ranking benefit from sending traffic from a very, you know, strong website or area like Google and sending that directly to your Amazon product detail page. So number one, it's super targeted. So you're targeting buyers or people who are very like high likelihood in buying mode, which is very different from Facebook and Instagram, where you're just targeting people who are somewhat interested. They're definitely not there to buy and you might not even be interested in what you're selling. So unless you have like funnels in place with Facebook and Instagram, you probably shouldn't be sending traffic directly to your to your to your um, Amazon page and ruining your you know your conversion rate. With Google, you can send directly because they're in buying mode, um, and Amazon loves that external traffic. They can actually instead of sending it to a landing page and then from a landing page redirecting, you won't get that kind of benefit from Google. So sending it directly can actually help your overall BSR, your keyword rankings, um, and um, and, and then you can actually track results using Amazon attribution. So what you can do is, I know it's a side note, but see if you have access, but go to your seller central. Um, I forget exactly where it is. I think it is under advertising. So advertising um, and then Amazon attribution or like attribution beta, and you'll click on that. And from there, you can actually create a tracking link specifically for Google ads. So just you take your product, like your, your, your clean kind of product link with no like, you know, product and then slash keywords equal, you know, crystal plus wine plus stopper. No, just your clean, like, you know, URL. And you input that into the, basically the attribution tool. And then it'll create this longer URL that has your base plus this tracking code. And then you use that new URL and then you can track um, to some degree. I don't think it's hundred percent accurate though. It's because a lot of the metrics don't really line up, but by doing that, you can somewhat measure success for that specifically of your Google advertising campaign and kind of see like your total return. And um, any sale that's made through that link, you can get up to 10% of the sale price from Amazon on top of the sale. So you get the sale and then the brand referral, you get kind of 10% of that as well. So, so that's bit Google ads overall, specifically Google search ads, because there's different types of advertising within Google. And yeah, the reason for it and all of that. And also a lot of people kind of, I think people, a lot of sellers are kind of looking for like a, the, the solution. Like what is the solution? Like almost like singular, it's kind of like, okay, it was rebates. Now what? It's like, for me personally, I like to have this kind of diversified toolbox, like this set of product launch strategies that I can then implement depending on like my product and seasonal and things like that. And this is one of the tools that I use. PPC is huge because you, you see all the results there. Um, you get super targeted your audience. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's great. And on top of that with Google ads, that usually makes up between five to 10%. So whatever we're spending on Amazon PPC, about five to 10% of that we allocate toward Google ads, just like for perspective. This is kind of what we do. So you're like, oh, well, that's actually not a lot, Sumner. Exactly. It is a little bit more, more, you know, maybe not as high converting, but it's still absolutely worth that amount to put um, to kind of get that additional revenues to get the brand referral bonus um, and all, and also, you know, capture more sales as well. So that's, so even though it's not a huge percentage or a huge amount, it's still worth it. And it's still very, I mean, it can be very, very passive as well. It doesn't have to t consume a ton of your time as well. A lot of overlap with Amazon PPC. In my view, just a lot of reasons to, at the very least, set up a test with Google ads. Last tip, if you create a new Google ads account, you're brand new, you're like, I I've never used this before. I have no idea. You create a new account. They could give you between anywhere from 50 to $150 in free ad credits. 
So for you spend up to, you know, $150, you get $150 from Google in some cases. Other times it's like, I think as low as 50. I have, because when I ran, I did this for like companies. I had a bunch of different like emails that, that I used like with their business. I had my own, like um, my own, I guess, agency emails and all that. I created all these different accounts to get the, um, at the time. So basically for that period, for if, if it was like a hundred dollars you spend, you get a hundred dollars. Then that hundred dollars that you spend, you're actually getting like half price, you know, clicks. So th that's also uh, valuable as well. So that's on the Google side. Does that make? I know that's a lot. Sorry. Does that make no, sense? No, no, that makes sense. Yep. Great. Yep. I got I got an email just the other day. Spend five hundred, we'll give you five hundred. I was like, five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. I've never. Really I've not seen that. I've not seen that yet with any. At least maybe they. I think they might. Maybe they caught on to me and they're like, I'm gonna stop <laughs> giving you these, these promos. It was a while ago. Now I don't do any of that kind of stuff. But I was like super, like just trying trying to get any any ad credit that I could. Um, but yeah, so it can be very uh, advantageous. And like, yeah, definitely set up a, t I would say with anything, and this is something I've learned personally, is I've listened to, like I go to conferences, you know, I'm always like in masterminds, like listening to people and testing things and sharing things. And what I found is like, it's crazy the number of times where someone's like, I have this strategy, it worked amazing with my business. Everyone needs to do it. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I definitely need to. And I'm like doing it, whatever it might be, if it's with influencers or with Google ads or with Amazon posts or whatever. And I'm testing it with my business. And it's like, really? I'm not getting, am I doing something totally wrong? Am I an idiot? Like, what am I doing? And the reality is that every product's unique. Business is unique. Time of year. Like, there's so many variables. Um, it doesn't matter if someone got phenomenal results, in my view. Uh, you still you need a test. Like, you can't just take it like, oh, hey, they're, they're, they're great. They do, you know, I see, I've seen their numbers. Oh, my gosh, 10 million. Yeah, they're, they're great. I'm just going to implement this blindedly. You should always set up a test. So with Google Ads, a way to test is, Number one, create the um, attribution link so you can track kind of the direct sales and some of the direct data. Again, I think it still is a little bit glitchy um, from what I've seen, like in my Google ad uh, campaign manager. And then when I go over to attribution, like like the clicks and things don't really line up, but still good to have. Number two, look at your BSR after implementing kind of the Google ads. Uh, number three, look at specific keyword ranking for some of your top you know keywords, at least, and kind of track performance over time. Uh, look at total profit and sales as well for that period. And you can kind of pretty accurately gauge, you know, I'm driving Google ads. Am I making more profit? Yes or no. Um, and then, you know, kind of AB test that. And yeah, oh, it's a little bit more effort. What I have to track these metrics. Are you kidding me? It's, you, you can't improve what you don't measure. So even if like, I'm telling you, oh my gosh, I get great results with my, with my business. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's going to vary. And also the execution of what people actually do is going to vary as well. So yeah, definitely set up a test, but I think it's definitely worth testing. I would definitely what? set up a test and I think you'll see, uh, yeah, a positive kind of uh, a positive impact. What are you doing on the Pinterest side? Is it similar setup? Yeah, somewhat similar. So yeah, I know <laughs> people who follow me know I talk a lot. So I apologize. I just kind of dive in and trip over myself. Keep talking. Keep talking. It's good. <laughs> no, I'm like I said, like I that's yeah, we, I, I really try as much as I can just I have this information, like I can't help, like I need to share. Well, your, your passion jumps support. through the you screen, so that's good. Um, <laughs> like you, you just keep talking, like I can't help it. Okay, so with the Pinterest side, so Google, okay, makes sense. People are on Google to buy. I can send traffic directly. Amazon likes Google traffic. Uh, I can get really targeted with the keywords. Okay, cool, I get that. Why Pinterest? That's weird. Um, so Pinterest, so I started, so I was like a decent Pinterest user, like in high school, I started using Pinterest. This is like, when was this? I think 2014 or even before I was like, um, like a Pinterest user, which is very atypical. It's like very weird. I was looking up like different, like his history stuff and, um, like urban gardening and like all this kind of stuff that I was interested in at the time. And so I've been on Pinterest like for a while, just kind of on the user side. Um, and then at some point I was like, I, I just use it personally. And then I heard of some sellers like, yeah, we're using Pinterest to launch products. We're seeing a lot of great results with Pinterest content. I'm like, I never thought about using Pinterest for my business. Like, let me look into this. So I started diving into a lot more data and obviously did a lot more testing and create content, which I'll talk about. But on the initial side, I was like, Pinterest, huh? Oh, apparently Pinterest was originally a, an e-commerce site. When it first started, the founders realized that people were like adding to their wish list and they kept going and visiting their wish list and never actually purchasing. So they were kind of like saving ideas and they're like, huh, that's interesting. Let's turn this actually into a social media platform. So actually, Pinterest is not social media. It's not an e-commerce site. Uh, it's a search engine. It's a visual search engine. So you go to YouTube, you type keywords into the search bar on YouTube, you find videos. If you go to Amazon, you type in keywords, you find products. If you go to Pinterest, you type in keywords, you find images. 
um, which are called pins. That's the type of content. They're mainly these vertical types of usually kind of like photos. Now it's also uh, starting to become a lot more kind of video on the platform as well. So it's a search engine. And that always piques my interest. Ooh, YouTube search, Google search, Amazon search, search engine. Oh, that's interesting. So that's kind of cool. It's like, okay, so I could potentially rank for keywords here. I can target specific keywords. That I like that. That's interesting. But what about like, what are, why are people on Pinterest? Like, what are they here to do? And a huge percentage, and I totally blanked on, on the top of my head. I just had like a podcast talking about this. There's a huge percentage, and I wanted to get the number right. And I can't remember, but a very large percentage. And I would just Google this for yourself of Pinterest users are there with purchase intent. They're actually there either to plan a purchase or actually there to make a purchase within that day, within that kind of like that session. So there's a huge percentage of people on Pinterest that are actually there to plan a purchase and to buy way more than Facebook. I think Facebook is like 15 or 17%. And I think Pinterest, it's over 40%. It's like very, very high. Like it's, I actually think it's over half of the platform is there to actually purchase or plan a purchase. So it's a search engine that I can target keywords potentially with my advertising and, and also create content. And it's a place where people actually have purchase intent. Oh, that's interesting. Let me try this out. So what we did is, and we've done a lot of, we create a lot of content um, on Pinterest. And what we do is two things with Pinterest. So number one, okay. So number one, to backtrack a little bit, Google's awesome because it applies to a lot of different, um, it can apply to a lot of different products. Pinterest is a little bit more targeted. So with Pinterest, like if you have to first ask as a marketer, is, is my audience here? And there's a chance, like if you're selling, I don't know what it would be like, uh, like a tape gun. Pinterest might not be your best platform. You could probably still run Google ads and you could and, and be successful, but Pinterest probably isn't the best platform. And you're like, well, what platform, what, what does well on Pinterest? Just type in um, list of Pinterest categories and you'll see all the different categories. And you can look at subcategories that um, are popular on Pinterest that Pinterest has categorized in like their, their, um, in their system. So look at that first. And you're like, okay, actually, I think my audience is here. Like there's definitely content that relates to my product. If that, if so, okay, then we can move forward. Like just, that's the first thing. I had someone, I think they started creating content on Pinterest and it was for something like a, like a fire extinguisher. You know, baby. Um, and I'm like, yeah, like I, I, I didn't realize I need to be more clear about like, yeah, first check to make sure like your audience is there and it can still be worth testing. Like maybe you'll now, because Pinterest has very high domain authority, you'll see for a lot of product searches on Google, a lot of times it depends on the category. Uh, Pinterest will actually be one of the top SERPs on Google, one of the top kind of results there in a lot of cases, which is really cool. So what's really cool is, I, anyway, okay. So I created a lot of content. So what's cool is like, we have stuff on Etsy, on Amazon and on Pinterest. For some of our keyword searches on Google, we have our website, our YouTube channel, our um, Amazon storefront and Amazon, um, Amazon product page, Etsy, uh, we're, it's not our product on Etsy, but it's like the Etsy search and we're ranking on Etsy and a Pinterest pin in Google search for some mm -hmm. of our keywords, which is really powerful. So with Pinterest, what we do is to keep it really simple, like a, a simple strategy, it's a search engine. That's awesome. So what you can do is again, go to your exact match campaign, or if you haven't run any ads yet, then you can you know do some really targeted keyword research and try to identify some of your top search, most relevant keywords, like five to seven. Write those down. And then what you'll do is take five to seven product images, or if you have user generated content, that's awesome as well. Go to canva.com, uh, which is a free graphic design tool, completely free. I'm not an affiliate. So click on that, Canva. Um, you'll see that there's an option where you can literally, um, they have all these pre-built Pinterest templates. Pick one that looks pretty. Pick one that you like. So you pick one, it's there. And then take your image and basically like insert your image. Obviously it depends if I, if I was here on the screen, I could kind of show you, but Put your image in there. Um, I think lifestyle images work really, really well, but switch it up. So you have product images, you know, white background, lifestyle images, someone using and enjoying your product. And basically each of those pins is mainly going to be each a different um, image, one of your product images. And then on the text, have like your main keyword on the text because Pinterest actually reads text on images. So it actually, that goes into the ranking factors on Pinterest. So you have your main keyword, different keyword for each of the, let's say just five, a different image for each five. Um, download that, create a Pinterest business account, which is also free. Upload those five different pin, what, images, which are pins. So upload those five different pins and then make sure that that keyword is in your title, your description. And if you want to take it a step further, make sure it's on your metadata. When you download the image, um, kind of on the back end, make sure it's on your file name and your metadata. So it's on your, it's in the back end. It's the keywords on your, on your image. It's on your title. It's on your description. 
that's going to give you the best chance of now when someone types in keywords on Pinterest or even potentially on Google, now that pin that you created with your beautiful product image can actually show up it, and results vary. It totally depends on how competitive the existing options are and all of that. But a, I found a lot of Pinterest users are very, it's a, it's a very creative platform. So a lot of, there's a lot of creativity there, but there's not a lot of kind of, of, of keyword optimization and analytics there. It's, it's a little bit, I think uh, when you treat it like a search engine, um, I think you can really exploit it well and, and potentially rank then on Pinterest and on Google organically. And from perspective, we get about, how much was it? I, I just looked today. It's about 300 clicks per month organically to our listings from just doing this. Not, we don't create a bunch of content every, every week or every day. Like we're say it's always about resources, you know, effort in and out. And like passively we're doing like consistently, I think right now it's like 300 uh, clicks, outbound clicks to our Amazon listings specifically. We have Etsy content, that's separate. We have website content, that's separate. We have our blogs, that's separate. It's just the Amazon, it's about 300 a month just from doing this for our products. So in terms of our effort in, it was very, very low. It took very little time. And now with the VA, it's even easier. And the return back, but where we really scale things up with us, and we've seen other people just crush it. We've seen other people do the exact same strategy and they went, like, it was in, we have a course on uh, of this on Udemy for Pinterest. And one of the, like the students messaged us and was like, Hey, like, here's like a screenshot from my dashboard of doing what you guys said. And it was like insane. It was like millions of impressions within like a month. It was insane. So not saying that that will happen. It could happen. Don't expect, I, be conservative. That's like my stance and then be pleasantly surprised when something goes really well. Um, but I want to give a little bit of like of my data and kind of what that works, but there's kind of a range. But I think it's worth just, if your audience is there, just put it out there and then be done. It's passive. And if you don't really get many or any clicks, all right, you waste a little bit of time. But if you get, you know, dozens or hundreds of clicks from people who are buying um, and from Pinterest, that traffic, that even if it's a little bit of traffic, um, can help your kind of raise listings in, um, in search engine rank, rankings on Amazon. So it's beneficial. And then what we do, so we create those pins. And then on top of that, what you can do is just like you can take your product and sponsor your product on Amazon. You can create uh, sponsored pins or basically Pinterest ads. <clears throat> so you take your pin. And with my pin also, I like to make sure that, like I said before, I like to make sure my price point is down there in the bottom right corner is this little like bubble. So, because I don't want people clicking on my ad or clicking on my pin who are cheap or, or they're not looking to buy. I'm like, I only want people who are looking to buy right now. Like that's all I want clicking and, and looking at my stuff. So you have your pin. That's the only other thing I meant to mention is having the price down there could help. You can promote that. And there's two ways you can target it. One is keywords and the other is interests. So keyword targeting, very straightforward exactly the same. You can do exact phrase or broad. I recommend either exact or phrase. Really though, I'd recommend exact to be really, really targeted and just, um, yeah, any relevant um, keyword that you can possibly think of, go ahead and include their in exact match. And the other side is interests. When you, so I like to have one campaign is keywords for, for product A. And then I have my second ad group, which is interests. So interest kind of like with Facebook, like you can target people who are in, have expressed interest in certain types of content. And the key though here is to make sure you get super drilled down, like super, like you click on an interest, then there's sub interest. You click on that and there's another sub interest. So you keep going down kind of the rabbit hole till the very end of the node. That's what you want to select, assuming that it's relevant because that's hyper, hyper, hyper focused. So like, yeah. So instead of like, I don't know what it would be like, yeah, financials or, or it's like, instead of wine, you could specifically choose like wine toppers. I want to target wine toppers, not just wine. Um, and you can A-B test and kind of have a more broad versus that, but be very targeted with interest, be very targeted with keywords. Then you can, you can select specific marketplaces like the U S the UK, Canada, um, all or one or whatever you can, uh, select certain age ranges. So obviously, you know, 18, 24 year olds. No, sorry. I don't want you guys to see my ads because you don't have any, you, you have no money. You're all broke. And you know, you can also exclude some of the older generation as well, depending on what your product is and your audience. And then for the bid, what I highly recommend doing is setting a custom bid. Don't let don't let Amazon choose your bids. Don't let Google choose your bids. Be in control of your bids because they want to spend your money. So set a bid to 11 cents. Why? The minimum bid on Pinterest is 10 cents. So you want to bid one above what everyone else is doing, which is 10. And because like why 11 cents? This seems so like just cut and dry. Isn't there like a formula I need to do? Or it doesn't depend. Start at 11 cents because in last year, Pinterest started charging um, for clicks on your pin where they used to charge for clicks, outbound clicks. So now there's 
clicks where someone clicks on your pin to see more information, to see your description, to enlarge your pin, things like that. And then there's clicks of, of a percentage of those people then will click all the way through to your URL, which again, can direct directly to your Amazon listing. And um, so setting at 11 cents, that's for people to actually click on your, on your um, pin. And our average, I think outbound cost per click is about 34 cents. So with an 11 cent cost per click, our outbound cost per click is about 34 cents. So still fairly low, especially for, you know, because that, that quality traffic directly from Pinterest um, and super, super targeted, like hyper, that's really, really key. If, you, if you're going to target um, not a super hot audience, like somewhere warm or kind of in the middle, you want to make sure you're super targeted with that. And, and again, same thing, set up a test and kind of run results. That's really where we get the majority of traffic from Pinterest is really from the ad side. We just scale that because you can just scale up so much faster. And the last thing I'll say about Pinterest ads is you have your pin, the content that you are then now promoting. Um, when you turn off your ad, so as you're promoting, people can, they can kind of react. They can like, um, they can repin it or, or save it to their board. So basically, I don't know. It's like, I'm trying to think of a way to describe this, but it's kind of like you have like your Facebook photo albums and then someone could like take a photo that you post and then put it into one of their albums. It's probably the most similar way that I could do or like, um, or on YouTube, like you can like, like a video or save it to a certain playlist or save it to a certain. So people on Pinterest can take your ad because it is a piece of content and save it to what's called a board. And then that gets, and that, those boards, even small, like personal boards can get a lot of visibility. So those boards get even more visibility. Um, and when you turn off your ads, they all stay there. So that's what's really beautiful with a boosted Facebook post. When you turn off the ads, it's done. Like it's over. Like it doesn't rank. Like you're not going to necessarily um, in some ways, whatever, but not really. With Pinterest, it kind of helps you rank for those keywords, get more visibility and organic clicks. And when you turn off your ads, if you're like, oh, this isn't really working well, let's turn it off. You still get that organic um, benefit. All those saves or there's what was called repins. They stay there. Um, any engagement on that, that stays everything. So that's another kind of uh, benefit as well. Uh <laughs> Sumner, I get the feeling that you love what you do. <laughs> you have a ton of passion. Um, and that's that's amazing. Those, this might be like the most jam-packed conversation of For sure. tips and strategies that we've done. Um, and we're almost at 200. But somebody, for all those listening, save this podcast go through it step by step just listen to five minutes pause it execute what you just learned turn it back on execute it's amazing i mean just just hearing just hearing the cost per clicks on pinterest ads just wakes me up I and mean, it's like 11 cents okay <laughs> and when you compare that with uh, amazon advertising or anything else all the stuff that you have you have to do those but these are just other ways this is fantastic. Some we we have got to get more time with you. There's no doubt. We're going to get you back on here. We're going to go down different rabbit holes because um, you obviously have a, a lot of knowledge. And you, I like the fact that you're a hustler. You test stuff out. You're trying new things. You're looking for new ways, um, you know, to bring value to your customers, and also new ways to reach them. Um, so it's invaluable for everybody listening. So I know that people are like, I've got to hear more from Sumner. I got to hear more of what he's doing. How, so how can people follow your content? How can they, uh, you know, l listen to your courses, join your courses, all the things that you put out there? How can they get in touch with you? How can they learn how to uh, hop Airbnbs all over the world <laughs> and live, live the amazing life? Uh, how can they contact you? And find all that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, first, like kind of how it started is, you know, like I said, my wife and I sellers first and we're on YouTube. So there's like a lot of missing information, like, oh, how to create a shipping plan, how to add promo codes, how to do the, how, Amazon posts. What are they? So we started making content like, oh, this could be another side, you know, thing with our Amazon thing at the beginning. And as our Amazon thing grew, the YouTube thing grew. So um, post a lot of content, very kind of somewhat like this, like very kind of tutorial like and, and kind of step by step. So it's one of the best places. We also have a Facebook group, the Amazing Escape Plan uh, Facebook group. So feel free to join, ask questions there. We also have some affordable like courses about Etsy, about Pinterest on Udemy and Skillshare. So they're basically, they're like, you can get them for like 10 or 20 bucks. So very, very inexpensive. Less, like way under a hundred. Not 997 courses, not $5,000 courses. <laughs> they're all good, but we have very, you know, very affordable and very, very step-by-step. -step. You'll get your money back from that. I can promise you. Um, but yeah, free content first. If there's any way I can help, you can reach out. I'm on like, all social channels, including TikTok. 
and Pinterest. So shoot me a Pinterest message. Uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, uh, any way that I can help really, I, um, I'm very, I appreciate, you know, you guys having me on and I've got just so much love and, and for my own audience and so much support. And I'm like, like, I, I have to give back. So I'm, I'm just trying to find ways to do that. So I'm more than happy to. We're going to give you plenty of opportunity to give back. We're going to be hitting you up to come back on for sure. It's been an absolute blast. Everyone, you got to go follow his content, take his courses They'll walk you through it. This was a free course right here. So you can, like I said, take this step by step. Uh, our buddy, Nathan Clark, he's like, I think he likes what he's listening to here. I think he liked what he heard. You know, download it. I love it. Um, so Sumner, thanks so much for, for tuning in. Everybody who's listening, this is great content. If you'd like to hear more content like this, make sure you're subscribing to our podcast. We've got experts all over the space uh, joining us. Not as many with the passion you got there, Sumner. That was great. That was you brought you brought a lot of energy. Got us excited. Uh, so yeah, absolutely subscribe to this podcast. You can watch our live streams on all of Solozo's social channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, etc. You can find all of our past episodes there. Uh, and additionally, you know, Amazon advertising. I mean, you have to do that. All these other things that we're talking about, they're they add on, but you've got to really, you know, the customer base is there on Amazon. You've got to be running ads for sure. And you've got to get that buttoned up. You got to get that optimized so that it's efficient. You're not wasting money. So Lozo can help you out with that. Go to solozo.com. You can schedule a demo. We'll talk anything Amazon. Obviously we love it. We'll talk about anything in the space, but we'll also show you and help you set up advertising campaigns um, that can be optimized as they run through Solozo's platform. So go there and book your demo today. You can talk with Chris or I really soon. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Sumner, thanks for joining us. We will be back at this again later today. We got another episode later today. So tune in for that. 